a typical discount supermarket in a medium-sized American city. Each week, approximately 21,000 people come here to buy their food. For many of them who have lived in a city all their lives, they have come to depend on this store and ones like it to fill this basic need. Rising food prices must be faced every day by these people, especially those on low and fixed incomes. If there were a food shortage in this city, how would these people survive? Growing your own food has become a lost art here, or has it? In the past several years, a new community movement is taking place all over the United States in an attempt to make city people less dependent on others for their food supply and more near self-sufficient. It's called community gardening, and we'd like to show you the beginnings and organization of one of these community gardens. The first thing we did to start our community garden was to locate a plot of vacant land in our neighborhood, which was relatively clean of debris and which had an available water source. We contacted the owners of the property for permission to garden there for the season. In our case, the owner was a doctor's association, which had their offices located directly next to the vacant lot which we wanted to use. Next, we had to find a source of rototilling, and this was done for us by our city's parks department. After it was tilled, we set out to mark off individual plots, measuring approximately 20 by 20 feet per person. And then we began to do some hand spading and cultivating to get ready for planting. You have a garden, I mean, you have a carpet laying in your garden. How yeah. come? We read um, in an article before we planted that carpet is good for retaining moisture. Um, they won't evaporate through the carpet, but the rain and other moisture will just go right into the soil easily. It will also hold down our weeds and act as a good mulch. Most of the plants we have put in were started with seedlings rather than seeds because we planted late, but they have taken root really well. and. I think it'll work out. What all do you have in here? Going Primarily up here we have tomatoes, a few um, cucumbers, we have onions right here, two types of lettuce, um, and we have just planted some carrots. And we want to uh, compare the two halves of our plot, carpeted and uncarpeted, to see how, how it does work out. And if the uh, carpet that you use is of uh, wool or cotton material, it will um, eventually decompose and add uh, to the soil over a period of years. Well, would like over the winter this will decompose or it would take longer than that? Well, what are you going to do? You're just going to leave the carpet down all winter? Um, I don't know what will happen with the plot after we're through with it this growing season, but um, it would take at least three or four years for the carpet to decompose, I think, to go into the soil. Where'd you get the carpet? I asked the manager of my apartment building if there was any old carpet, and there were uh, several old carpets laying in a basement, so he was happy to give them to us. And there were more available, but we didn't need them. Each gardener could plant any crops he chose and was free to experiment and try out some different techniques of raising vegetables. There were only two basic rules of the garden. Because we wanted to do organic gardening, that is, without the use of artificial fertilizers and pesticides or biocides, no one was allowed to use chemicals on his plot without the consent of the garden manager. Also, because land was at a premium, each gardener had to keep his plot well tended through the season or risk having it forfeited to others. Sharing of crops between gardeners was up to the individuals, but basically, each person raised and tended his own crops. Maybe it's like three weeks. Yeah. But I didn't fertilize them as well as I did my potatoes. Really good to point though, everybody's following the directions, you know? Everybody has ESP. 
the original. Well, I guess we'll just get busy. Uh, Quentin, do you want one of these? Come grab a tool. The project provided basic hand tools for the garden and also some initial fertilizers. And each person was responsible for getting his own seed. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Fine. In getting word out to people in the neighborhood that you want to come and take part in this kind of project, it's important to advertise it in a very selective way. It's best to do it in the immediate neighborhood where the garden is located. In that way, the garden will be composed of people who are part of that neighborhood. Even though our garden was in a heavy urban environment, we had very little vandalism and stealing of crops. And this was due to the fact that the people lived nearby, they walked by their gardens every couple of days or every day, and there was a very close feeling about the garden in the community. How did you hear about the project? Um, there was a sign on a telephone pole near my house. And so I called a number and... You're from this neighborhood? Yeah, I lived on 23rd and Pettigrew. And so that's how I found out about it. And then there were some plots left and I wanted this one. And so I got some seeds and stuff together and planted some seeds. So I started, I think, in the middle of July, because that's when I found out about it. And then it started pouring down rain. I thought they were all going to get washed away. Isn't July a little late for a garden? Yeah, but that's when I found out about it. So I decided that there were some things like spinach and lettuce that, that still grow at that time. You can plant them about every two weeks and they still come up. And since that's the kind of stuff I wanted to grow, that's what I planted. And I planted some pumpkins too. I don't know if they'll come up or not, but they're sincere. Are you going to do this again next year? Well, I, I hope so, if, if the ground is still here. The role of the garden manager is very important for the success of a community garden. This manager or coordinator is an essential person in keeping the garden running smoothly throughout the growing season. This person can facilitate buying of supplies in bulk, fencing off the plots, seeing that the individual gardens are kept up through the season, and keeping track of the tools, organizing group activities such as building compost bins, and most importantly, dealing with the landowner, whether this is the city, the county, or a private individual. In this function, the coordinator acts as a main source of communication between the garden members and the owner, ironing out any problems that may arise. So, so, so nothing goes on. Gardening is a year-round thing. And, well, yeah, it is. Uh, soil is my topic, at least. Besides the actual garden, Grove provided a practical introductory course in the organic methods of growing vegetables. The course consisted of a basic text for reference and a 12-week lecture series. We invited experts from the local schools and agencies to come to the garden and give a talk on their favorite subject in the area of home vegetable production. I think you ought to do. If at any time you have any questions, interrupt, please. And then you start to sow your seed in, you know. And then when you sow your seed in, the best way is uh, like... These lectures were linked together in rough chronological order as the various gardening problems presented themselves to us in our individual plots, beginning with soils and soil structure and then sowing seeds. A small piece of paper and then use a pencil or other stock things, <coughs> go, go on this way, <coughs> use the pencil or any stock things to put the little seeds one by one. Or now, we could talk about tomatoes. How do you treat mature tomatoes? And we've all had the same problem this year. We've had a... As the season progressed, we learned how to care for our maturing plants. And um, so we, 
and, and you got it's tomatoes to me I just love them but um and it, it aggravates me that um I've got I've, I've done a bad job this year but you know you that's all way we learn well the first thing I do and and, and my bad job down there is a little bit better than maybe average but and uh would you like to come out and take a look sure okay Come on over, Peter. And we love him. to get advice. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, Peter's full of advice. <laughs> when you have lecturers as interested as the ones we had last year, like Peter Chan and Dr. Calvin, uh, the opportunity to ask them questions about our very own plants right there in our own garden and um, their presence there and their ability to look at the plant and answer our questions for us was really uh, invaluable you know, aid and a, and a benefit to our own gardening experience. It really helped me a lot. You could ask them about what was happening um, with your corn when it had red on its leaves that you didn't understand. And they would be able to tell you right there and look at it and say, well, it's probably either this or this. And looking at your soil, you might have too much clay or your nitrogen isn't enough or something like that. Oh, the, the sawdust won't bother it that much. But um, it, it looks like, you know, if you watered this, for example, it's just a little bit compact here. Uh -huh. you, know, you notice how compact that is where oh, they've yeah. been walking. Well, they, yeah, it's from I think walking. It, yeah. yeah, now I think that if, uh, I don't know how moist the soil is, we could tell if we uh, had, if you had a hole and we could hole it up. It looks like it might be a little bit dry. Uh -huh. How often do they water? About twice a week. Oh, At least okay. that's what I've been saying. For how long a period of time, you know? Oh, I think that depends, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Well, but we you think a, it could use more water, huh? Oh, it looks to, my, uh, looks to me like it could. And uh, those things over there don't look like they're, some of them are really doing quite that good. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Did you have a hole? Did you have sure. A hole? Yeah, if we had a hole and uh, we could hole, uh, let's see where your hole is and we'll take a look at the mine. I would, would go along here every now and then and I'd probably have it spaded and, and loose like that. Dig you it know, up. And, yeah. And then when you water it, the water will go in. It's, it's pretty hard see, for the water to go through on stuff like that yeah, right. and uh, I would keep it worked up a little bit yeah now you notice this corn's got even a better color than that over there which is that's you think a little short on nitrogen don't you Peter uh, yeah oh you transplanted it no. yeah. The woman did. The oh, woman, yeah the woman who has that plot yeah transplanted it how big was it when she transplanted it oh really yeah yeah I think that's what it is and it's probably that as much as anything else yeah Yeah. Peter, how often would you recommend that they water their garden? Why don't you come closer so I can get the mic better? Uh, the weather, like today, is pretty warm. And, you know, it needs a whole lot of water. So, if you give it um, once a day is enough, it means every day. It, it's not. But 
Many experts have predicted that the world will probably face a critical shortage of food in our lifetime due to the increasing threat of overpopulation. We may not see famine on a large scale in this country, but experts estimate that the food supplies of the world will not be enough to feed the Earth's already overcrowded population. Therefore, it is becoming increasingly more important than ever for people to strive to be as self-sufficient as possible. Community gardening may not be the whole answer to this problem, but it is a beginning. Yeah. 